In the previous video, we got MongoDB installed and running on your system. Now we're going to take a look at how to insert data and perform some basic queries in MongoDB. So I have my Mongo daemon server up and running like we set up in the first video. And in another command window, I'm going to start up our Mongo process for interacting with our database. So I'm just going to type in Mongo. We get the MongoDB shell. Now the first thing you're going to notice is we are connecting to test. This means that the database that we're using is called test. So we can actually change to different database by using the use command. So we can do use foo, and now we're switching to a different DB. I'm actually going to be playing around in the test database, so I'm just going to say use test. So I'm just going to clear this out. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the MongoDB terminal is just an interactive JavaScript environment. So we can do things like evaluate simple JavaScript, like 2 plus 2 or set variables like x equals 7 and do things like x times x and get values back and strings and stuff work too so we can do hello plus world and we can do simple javascript operations like that now it's not a full browser javascript so things like the dom and other attributes are not going to be in here but the core language of javascript is available in the mongodb terminal so i'm going to clear this out again and so let's look at creating a document for us to store in our database. Now a document is simply a JavaScript object which has keys and values. So for instance, I could create the variable gym and start with an open curly brace to create our object. And we can span it across multiple lines. So I'm going to just set some values like first name. And I'm going to set it to a string value here and then trail with a comma. Do last name, we'll do Hoskins. And then we'll do like, we can do height. I'll just put 79 inches. And we can do skills. And we can actually do things like arrays. So I'll add JavaScript, Ruby, and Python. And I think that's enough for my object. So I'm just going to close it up with the closing curly braces. So we can see we got a representation back of the gem object, which is just first name, last name, height, and skills. Now you notice I didn't use quotation marks on the keys here because I didn't have to, because in the JavaScript syntax, if you're just using simple variable names, you can omit the quotation marks on the key values. Of course, if you have a key value with a space or any other special character, you're going to want to make, put them in quotation marks so you can have multiple word keys or any other special characters in them. Now we actually want to go ahead and save this into the database. So we can see our object gym still exists. In MongoDB, we use collections as a way to organize our data. They're sort of like tables. You can think of them as just different bins for our records. Now they don't enforce any schema. They are just a way of separating the types in your database. For instance, you may store all your books in one collection and all your people in another. Now you could store your books and your people in the same collection, but it's probably more convenient to keep them separate. So I want to store Jim into the people collection. And to do that, I just get our database object, which is the DB variable in our environment here. And I just give it the name of my collection. So I'm just going to call people. And then on that, I'm going to call the save method and pass it the record I want to save, in this case, Jim. So when I do that, we have now saved our Jim record into the people collection. Now you notice I didn't have to create the people collection. It didn't actually exist before I used it. So it'll automatically create it. Now if you really need to, you can predefine collection names and even predefine the maximum size of collections. But for us, it's just easier to define our collections as we go. And I'm just going to clear this out. And now if I want to get my record back, I can just call db.people. And on the collection, I can call the find method. I'm not going to pass it anything right now because I just want to find all the records in it. So you'll see that when we do that, we get one record back, and it looks just like our record. We have a first name, last name, height, and a skills array, but we also have the special underscore ID property here. And this is the internal database ID that represents our object. So it should be a unique ID inside of our database. It's going to be automatically assigned to any record we put in unless we already have it assigned. But for, for the most part, we're not going to worry about setting our object ID. It's just used for reference, and we'll see that later. And so if I wanted to insert another person, I could just do db.people.save. And I'm going to just pass it as object right here. So I'm just going to say name is Sally. And I can do that. 
And if I do db.people.find again, you see now we have two objects, my gem object and my Sally. Now you'll notice they don't have to even share any of the same attributes. Here I did first name, Jim, last name, Hoskins, but here I just did name. And so that's one of the cool things about MongoDB is there's no schema to it, so you can just store the information you need. Now obviously in a lot of applications, most of your objects are going to have similar attributes, but you don't need to have it, so if you ever want to add more attributes to some objects, it's really easy to do. Now we can use normal JavaScript to automate inserting records. For instance, in this case, I'm going to create a collection of documents in the collection called squares. So I'm going to just loop through the numbers 1 through 99, and I'm going to call db.squares.save, and I'm going to give each document a property n, which will be i, 1 through 99, and the property square, which will be n squared, or i squared. So I can see I have multiple lines here, and I'm just going to commit this. And so now we can do something like db.squares.find. And you can see we obviously have a lot of records. Now you can see we have so many that it actually says has more down here. So if you ever get that, you can actually iterate over your collection of results by just typing it for iterate. And you can see we get more and more and more until we're done. Now if I want to find a specific record in our squares collection, I could do db.squares.find, and the first argument I'm going to pass to it is an object, and I'm going to specify that I want any of my records to have n have the value 12. So in this case, when I call it, you can see there's obviously only one record with the value n is 12, and its square is 144. So this simple syntax of passing an object with the key and value you want is a simple way of doing a search for a specific value in the database. Now, if I wanted to search for all the records that are less than 12, I can do db.squares.find, and I'm going to pass an object in again, and I'm going to give it the property n, but instead of giving it a single value, since I want to have a comparative operator like less than, instead of just passing the value 12, I'm going to pass it another object. And inside this object, this, these are going to be the conditions that n has to meet in order for it to return in this set. So there are special keys that we can use, and one of them is the dollar sign less than, or dollar sign LT, and when we pass it that value, we're saying we want it to be less than 12. So when you see dollar signs here, these are special operators that have special meaning in MongoDB. So in this case, I'm saying db.squares.find, where n is less than 12. Now when I go ahead and hit enter, you can see that we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up through 11. Now we saw that we got both the n and the squares property in our queries before. Let's say I only want to get the squares property. In the find command, I can pass a second argument, which is an object of the keys that I want to return. Now if I don't pass anything, it's going to return all the keys, but if I pass an object with something like square, and just the key one to say true, and I do that, you can see that we now only get the square property back. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some more advanced techniques for querying our database.